Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's A Focus on Business. And you know what? Today we're gonna talk insurance. No, 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 no running away. Because this is important information. We've got a good guy that knows what he's talking about. He's not a newbie. He didn't go last week go, I'm gonna become an insurance dude. Doesn't work that way. Yep. Gary Ward, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, how you doing? Welcome to a focus on business. Um, so goosehead insurance. Fun to say. <laughs> Kind of an interesting going like, uh, okay, you know, you're not, uh, you're not one of the big namer boys, but a very strong insurance company. Very much correct? so. Very much so. So mm -hmm. let's find out in the beginning, who is Darian? Well, uh, Darian grew up right around the corner here in Lutz, Florida. I was born and raised over there and I went to Sickles High School right around the corner in Hillsborough County. I decided that I wanted to get in the insurance industry a little bit different than most people. My family was in the insurance world with all state businesses and I decided that I was gonna, you know, just start helping them out here and there. I didn't think it was for me at first, you know, I was like, insurance, you know, eh, who wants to really we do that? We never want to do what our <laughs> mom and dad did. No, no. <laughs> it, it's, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a trait that's always been there since day one of existence of humans. Yeah. Like, uh, I really don't want to do what mom and dad did because you see what mom and dad had to go through to do the job. Very much so. And so it's, it a go, huh. it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But as I was helping them out, I was started with a 440 license, which is my customer the customer service uh, license that you get. And you can still technically write insurance underneath the 220 license. And that was my main focus, was helping clients to better educate them and understand their coverage to make sure they were protected. Now you were working with your parents at that point in time, I was, right? yes. And your mom's been doing this and your dad's been doing this for a long time, like 12, 13 well, years, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's a long time. 12, 13, that's, yeah. that's a long time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then you said, okay, I'm gonna sprout my wings, <laughs> I'm gonna go out on my own. Yeah, uh, I, was, uh, I was going to school at St. Pete College, first with a two year, and then I finished up with a bachelor's degree from there in business management and uh, focus on marketing. and focused on marketing because it was not something I'd done before. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, it's a marketing degree, but I said, you know what, I'm not good at marketing, so let me focus on that and get better at it. Right. And in the pursuit of that, I said, well, insurance isn't so bad. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. People need it, and right. it does it's help like, people. Yeah. It really does. It, whether because it's required in a lot of instances, it's not really an enjoyable process, and people don't like to learn it. But at the same time, it is. It's really vital that we understand it, so that right. way we make sure we're protected. Right. So it's not like you know, everybody has to have it. Correct. In one way or another, one whether way. it's mm -hmm. auto, mm -hmm. whether it's home, whether it's health, whether mm -hmm. it's renters, whether mm -hmm. it's business, business. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, kidnapping insurance. I mean, there's all kinds <laughs> of amazing, on that That's a amazing <laughs> amount of insurance. Um, there's, you know, at one point in time, um, my ears were insured. No way. Yeah, way. I worked for the recording industry as an audio. I was a sweetening engineer ultimately in, so my ears were insured because if I lost my ears, I couldn't work. Wow. Right. Then how I much were those bad boys worth? <laughs> they were, uh, they had three, they had three million dollar policy Ooh, sitting on them. Dang. That was expensive, but you know what? Worth I was it, taught yeah. from the very get go, you need the insurance. Mm -hmm. um, yes. uh, I know, I know editors that are eyes, their mm -hmm. eyes are insured. Camera guys that their eyes are insured. Mm -hmm. If they go out and get hit or hurt, mm -hmm. they get hit in the eye or something like that and they can't film anymore, yeah. their livelihood's over. Yeah, and that's also that's a very good point on why we do protect people and we have that holistic conversation with them and understand how much money they're making because we want to protect their income right. if something happens. And that is covered under usually our auto insurance as well. And we'll get into that a little bit further on when we right. focus we on auto. About the auto world. Oh, the auto world. So it's I not a fun thing. things yeah. over the years in the auto world that you're like <laughs> I'd have never in a million years thought I needed that kind of insurance, but I get yeah. it. I do now because yeah. I was educated properly, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That's so, it. Yep. okay, so let's talk about Goosehead Insurance. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard the name, but I don't know who they are. So Goosehead Insurance started back in 2003. Um, Mark Jones and his wife, Robin Jones, decided to start their own insurance company because they had a real estate portfolio that they couldn't find a 
insurance agent that they felt comfortable with. Ah. They said, you know, we can probably do this better. Uh, he was retiring from Bain right. Financial, and his wife was in the real estate market already. She was a realtor in Texas and said, you know, let's see what we can do here. Let's start with a blank sheet of paper and just kind of go from there. And Mark Jones to this day will be quoted saying that he has never st stepped foot into an insurance agency. Just that's the kind of guy he is. He, right. He's going to make it the way he believes it should happen. You know, easy. It's easy. So you, yep. so you get that comfortable feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's you, smart. Yeah. Transparent, easy across the board, you know, just a nice flow through. So that way it's not every time you go back, you're reinventing the wheel. Right. Right. And so their main focus was on service. They looked at USAA, who had the highest net promoter score and has one of the highest ones in most industries in the U.S. Okay. And they said, all right, this is going to be our our focus. This is our example that we need to go off of. And from there, they've just done better. Uh, they've got a, we have a higher net promoter score than USAA. We have twice the industry average in the insurance world. And the main focus for Goosehead Insurance is to make sure our clients are always heard and always make sure that they have someone to go to that is licensed and a professional and who knows their information. Very service orientated. Very much so. Which is a big deal because I mean, mm -hmm. uh, look, we all know people in this industry that are in the insurance. I mean, I know a ton of insurance people. Of course. And I also know a ton of these insurance people. They don't never, they never return phone calls. <laughs> yeah, Until we were having that conversation it's earlier. It's time to yeah. renew yep. or a major disaster happens mm -hmm. or something big comes along. Then they're calling going, hey, uh -huh. hey, do you remember me? I'm like, yeah, I think you're my insurance guy or girl or it, whatever yeah. you want to be today. <laughs> And that becomes a problem. Yeah, it is. It is a major problem. And it's funny, we were talking about that earlier. It's, that's one of the easiest things I do is call people back. Right. You know, it's, there should be no reason that you don't get that phone call back, that you don't have that hands-on personal experience. And the part of our service orientation is that I am available. Because if you need to make a payment or you need to change something on a policy that's already in force, that's something that's easily done by my service team but they're open from 7 a.m. 7 p.m. central time and there's over a hundred plus service agents ready and available to help right. you out. One of the great things about them as well is that we so usually you're not on the hold for less than a minute and 30 seconds that's the longest you'll be on hold waiting for a live person there's not the press 5 press 10 stand on one foot type deal it's you literally, you make the phone call, right. you have someone on the phone in under two minutes, and live see, person. That's a big, I mean, uh, I'm just going to give you a for example. We bought my child, my youngest, a, a truck, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's time to register it, mm -hmm. and we've called our insurance agent eight times now. Ah. No, yeah. no uh, return phone calls. Yep, not a goose head. That and happen. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I guess, you know, they're so big that they don't need my business anymore. Yeah. So then what do I That's, do? I immediately go in, hey, Darian, <laughs> what's going well, on, it's... buddy? Can he, I, 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 I need insurance. It, it's, it's sad. It is. It's it sad is. that it's that way. Mm -hmm. so, um, 100%. So, so under two minutes is mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. For, mm -hmm. That just blows my mind. That, mm -hmm. Now, it how is. big is Goosehead? So Goosehead, we have a, over 400 plus million in uh Excuse me. The <laughs> in premiums ridden. Okay. Yes. And so, but that's throughout many states. Um, th their main headquarters is in Texas, and there's franchise locations such as myself. I'm an independent franchise, okay. and I write specifically in Florida. We, there's agents in Florida, Texas, California, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia. I think some just came in New York, and they're expanding because. Clearly, there is a need for this type of insurance agency. Yes. Yeah, and that's also why I went with Goosehead, because I was so service-oriented that I didn't want to become an independent agent. It's kind of known in the independent world that it's just to verify or just to um, articulate the independent world. We call that 
anything other than like a State Farm or Allstate, those are captive agencies, mm -hmm. and independents are anything other than those those big names. So okay. there's other we write through like Progressive, Safeco, right, right. Um, Liberty Mutual in some instances, depending on where you're at, and so. My main focus is Florida, though. I can write anywhere in Florida, and my independent agency is in the Trinity, Pasco County area. Okay. Uh, but that service orientation was a big, big need so for going to Goose City. So you've become a, a boutique insurance. Exactly. That's 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 that, mm -hmm. that's the new word. It is. Boutique. It's yeah. So right. I say <laughs> because you're you're more you're you're back to where it used to be a long time ago. Very mm -hmm. service. -oriented. I mean, mm -hmm. back in the day, yes. man, we knew our insurance person. We had dinner with our insurance agent. Uh -huh. We saw him in church. We saw him out and about. Yeah. And they never ever ever wanted to make it where you did not want to say hi to them mm -hmm. or not use them. Oh, it was a whole different world. I mean, I know uh, all state agents that were there for 30 plus years. It's my family, and I heard stories of people used to be out the line waiting to go right. to the insurance agent, and that's how it was. It, it's not like that anymore. No, no one wants to go talk to an insurance and what, agent. And so we're going to come back, and mm -hmm. we're going to talk home and flood. All right. Because that's a big deal. I think mm -hmm. that's where you where you stand out there above the crowd. It is. 100%. So everybody just stick around. Go get some coffee like I've done. <laughs> which I need more probably, um, uh, and, and come back and watch. And we're going to talk about home and flood because the flood has changed. It has, and it's always changing as well. So there's always a lot to learn there. Some ever-shifting sands <laughs> of insurance. But anyway, we'll be right back after these messages. We'll see you in a second. Hi, I'm Jerry from Hot Locks Hair Salon. We are conveniently located at 13414 U.S. Highway 19 in Hudson. I've been a local hairstylist in our community for the last 34 years, seven of which I was an educator. Our passion is the artistry of hair, and Holox is here to help you achieve your perfect image. You can call us at 727-514-9978. Okay, we're back. And yep, we're going to talk homeowner and flood. So, 
flood scares people. It does. And it, it really shouldn't, right? No, it really should not. I mean, realistically, a flood is an interesting coverage in itself. And its definition is what most people don't really understand. It's, it's rising water damage. So there's a lot of instances where you think flood might be occurring, but it's not really flood damage. So busted pipe. No, that is not flood. Roof leak. No, not flood. Window breaks and it's raining inside, you're onto your comforter and your electronics. No, nope, not flood. Um, Anything, any type of rising water damage, and it has to also affect two or more properties and be on two or more acres, okay. or, sorry, or two or more acres. So, I mean, you could have a small flood that's just affecting your home, and technically that's not covered under a flood insurance policy. Okay, so if my if I live down, okay, I live downhill from my neighbor who has a pool, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. His pool lets go, it comes downhill and floods my house out. Flood or homeowner? Say, well, it's very, it's that's a very what is right? probably homeowners, right. but there could be flood coverage in there as well. Okay. It, it really. It depends on how many properties it affected, again, and how far of a distance it traveled. That'd have to be a so, big pool, wouldn't it? Yes, and that, <laughs> that's where you really start to get into a lot of the what-if scenarios and the, the claims adjuster okay, comes so, into but play. If it but it rains, storm mm -hmm. comes through, mm -hmm. and your neighborhood gets flooded out, that's rising water. That's rising water, and that's flood damage. And, and flood is a very interesting coverage in the fact that it, for a very long time, used to be a part of every home insurance policy. Right. And so a lot of people now just think, oh, I have flood coverage. Well, no, it either has to be endorsed onto the policy or it must be written as a separate policy. So it's not, it's not in the homeowner, which we're going to come back to, by the way. We're not, we're not skipping over home. I don't want people yeah. to go, oh, you didn't talk about homeowners. <laughs> I'm going to get there because actually what they've got some, they got some stuff that's going on that's really, really cool. But mm -hmm. I want to jump on a flood because right now it's a big deal because we just mm -hmm. went through the hurricane. We did. and Well, we didn't, but the panhandle did. Exactly, and after Irma last year, yeah, Irma, and Harvey Irma. in Texas, you know, the government has been very focused on flood insurance because they've been losing money on the flood program. That most of flood insurance has been through FEMA, and that has actually been changing lately. So there's been a lot of private flood insurance companies coming in, and now you can endorse it onto the home insurance policy again okay. through the private market, and it's cheaper. It's cheaper than. It already was, which if you were in the preferred flood zone, it's a couple hundred dollars every year for flood insurance for the max coverage. So, so okay, so I, I thought FEMA mm -hmm. and Citizens for Florida was the only people really writing flood insurance. They were for about a decade. Okay. So, yes, you were very correct about that. It's just now starting to change. So, I, Goosehead mm -hmm. can get me private Oh, or yeah. an endorsement for a flood. We do both. We can do the national flood program through FEMA, or we can do the private flood, and we can add it on to certain companies' home insurance policies, like uh, <laughs> Security First has oh, okay. an endorsement that you right. can add on, and a couple, quite a few are starting to add it on. I mean, it's changing right. every day. I just got an email right. yesterday where so I think Olympus was adding flood insurance to, oh, okay. and GeoVera specialty as well. So it really, it's amazing how it is an ever-changing scheme, you know, right. as far as the flood insurance is going. I, I was, I also go and uh, do lobby for clients for for consumers mm -hmm. for flood insurance and for all types of personal lines right. and I was up in DC with through NAFA is the program that I'm a part of and they've been around since I think 1890 and wow. yeah so the That's old a long time. was the oldest insurance um, advocacy program in the United States NAFA NAFA, NAFA. and okay. so you want an agent that's in NAFA because we fight for you guys. You know, we fight for ourselves too because we have insurance right, policies. Right, yeah, right. it's yeah, it's we, not like you're walking and going, yeah. to, "Ah, suckers, y'all yeah. want my insurance." And exactly. I got none. <laughs> no, we want to make sure way. everyone's right. protected. You know, and so it, it's amazing. They were there was a lot of whispers. It was about two years ago. I was up there and about the private program. They were all talking about, "All right, this is what we really want to focus on. Really want to make this happen," and it's really starting to come to fruition. You know, we all know it takes a while for government to start moving. And <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> and that's one of our other big sticks about flood. Because, all right, let's say you're in a low-risk zone, right? right? You're in X or B is the low-risk zones. 
and moderate zones. Guess who makes those flood maps? The government. The government. Who's to say those are always up and up? Right. And if you have a mortgage and you're in a low risk zone, you, you might think, I'm fine. Because your mortgage company is not saying, hey, I need you to flood, get flood insurance. But you really, in reality, it's the exact opposite. Forty percent of all flood insurance claims happen in a low to moderate risk zone. So we really want to make sure that you are being protected. And basically what that means is that everyone in Florida should have flood insurance, some type of flood insurance. Something. Something. Even if, even if you're sitting on a hill and mm -hmm. uh, even if you're in a hill in Florida, <laughs> you're still... You still have a good chance. Yeah. Of Florida. You're still That's, in Florida. <laughs> yeah, you're still. I mean, we are a sand hill. Yep. We are a peninsula surrounded mm -hmm. by water, and mm -hmm. this peninsula, yeah, peninsula surrounded by water, mm -hmm. or I call it an ant hill. <laughs> we live on an ant hill. It's a little bit nicer, but yeah, you know. <laughs> you know. But you know, we all we all run the risk of actually being flooded. Oh yes, very much. There's so. nothing saying that you know it can't go 50 feet, 60 feet. Exactly. And in some parts of the country. That's like barely lapping on their doorsteps, and in here mm -hmm. we're all underwater. So exactly, it, it, it really is a big deal. So mm -hmm. I heard, or I heard the rumblings of because of Michael being so devastating mm -hmm. that our our uh, coffers for the flood world are almost gone, depleted. Well, through the. Um through the government, the National Flood Insurance Program, right. yes, yes, it, it is. It's a it's a constantly a battle for those guys. Uh, even in Irma, they had to take a loan out, right, because of the amount they had just paid out for Harvey. It was a kind of a combination loan they took out for both, uh, and then uh, also there was a lot of flooding in North Carolina as well. That's what I was, my storm. question was: is we pay in Florida way more than the rest of the country does? Right? Actually, no. No, we don't. We do not. I figured we would pay more. Well, it's all, it's not actually specified per state. It's all set by the flood map zones. So depending on, if you're in a high risk zone, like a V zone right on the water, uh, then you're going to pay high premiums. And that's anywhere in the country. So technically, if you're in the next zone, you're going to pay, right now it's $450 for the max coverage right. through the National Flood Insurance Program. And it's four hundred fifty dollars everywhere for that max coverage. Got it. Two hundred and fifty thousand on the dwelling and a hundred thousand on your personal property coverage there, and four hundred fifty dollars a year to make sure that your your assets, your home, and the stuff that you have built your entire life right. to get is protected is nothing. Right, and see, and you know, we were talking about this in a group the other day that mm -hmm. you know we we in Florida we're paying it, but you get those those states like. Texas mm -hmm. or North Carolina that oh we don't need flood and yet they get flooded out worse than we ever think about getting flooded out mm -hmm. so now FEMA has to go in there and fix all this and pay out blah blah mm -hmm. blah but that's my money that I'm paying because I have flood insurance and those are people that did not have flood insurance so yeah you know, that's, that's also why they want to get into the private market because when it's so spread out right. throughout the United States and you don't have certain areas, putting, it's basically insurance is when you put money together with a pool of people Correct. and it pays out when someone has damage. So when you have that and people aren't all contributing, then it doesn't work. You right. know, and that's why this is happening. But I tell you, one other really cool thing about flood that I can do is that if you're in a high-risk flood zone and you have a mortgage, you're required to carry the flood insurance, is that there are still options for you. I, I, there's ways that we can possibly even get you out of a high-risk flood zone through what's called a LOMA letter. So, oh, really? Mm -hmm, letter of a map amendment. And Which the maps have changed. They did change all the time. So it requires an elevation certificate and a few other things, um, but there are options for you. So, yeah, you can always, it never hurts to talk to another professional right. and see what they know. So, okay, so say, because debt ratio when buying a house is a very big deal. It is huge. So yeah. if, you, if, you don't re, if you're not required to have insurance and your debt ratio is tight, mm -hmm. you forego the flood insurance to get the home, but as soon as you're into that home, you call your agent and go, okay, 
now put my flood insurance on there because I'm now I'm able to buy my house. I'm in it. But you know what? Because I live in Florida mm -hmm. and I know there's water, it's just safe to have. It is. And I mean, you do have to be a little careful there as far as you don't want to be um, like trying to pull wool over. The mortgage no, industry's no, no, eyes, that's of course. Not what I'm trying to say. I know, but I'm just but. saying you do have to be a little um, wary of that. But at the same time, it, it is so, such a low cost if you're in the preferred flood zone that it, it's probably not even going to affect, affect your, your debt, debt to ratio. income. No, that's a good uh, thing. Yeah, it is because you know yeah. I, I've had I've had I had a friend mm -hmm. who bought a house. He goes, I couldn't get my flood mm -hmm. because my debt ratio was so tight. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and it's very common. Yeah. It's very common, and that's actually another reason why. It's so great as uh, why I went with Goosehead Insurance. I have more options. So when you have those debt to income issues, then we can look at other carriers. We can look at other options. Maybe we can make sure you're still carrying home and flood together, you right. know, and maybe even I can save you some money on your auto insurance. That so if helps you. Bundle you it all together, it could bring the whole thing down. Exactly. Fix that debt ratio. Exactly. Yeah. It's, See? Yeah. See? It's, we're, we're smart guys. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Like, I, I, that dude right there is telling him to do something illegal. That's not what I was saying. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I understand that. I, I understand because of my wife's side, mm -hmm. you know, she does mortgages. Mm -hmm. and, and I hear it. I hear it a lot of times that, you know, man, that debt ratio, that debt ratio was tight. And they That's, needed insurance. So they mm -hmm. had to figure out a way to get all that because they were in a flood zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and having a good insurance agent is going to make it where they'll find the best way mm -hmm. to get you covered and to get you in the house. And with me, you have more options than most carriers. Right. And that's what we bring 20 plus A rated carriers to the table. And that is something that a lot of independent agencies don't even have. Right. Yeah, they're working with nine, 10 different carriers. We're, double that. Right. I mean, you know, you're, you have more options. You All know? right, so when we come back, we're going to get into the home side and probably the auto. You never know, but we may even touch a little See more. See if we have time for that. Yeah. If we have time. Yeah. So we'll be right back after these messages. Hi, I'm Jerry from Hot Locks Hair Salon. We are conveniently located at 13414 U.S. Highway 19 in Hudson. I've been a local hairstylist in our community for the last 34 years, seven of which I was an educator. Our passion is the artistry of hair, and Hollox is here to help you achieve your perfect image. You can call us at 727-514-9978. watch my favorite shows on the ceiling TV while they clean my teeth. Mom loves it because she says that they explain everything and give her the best choices. And they also teach us how to take care of our teeth. At Dr. B Pediatric Dentistry, we understand the individuality of each child and offer an exceptional and gentle dental care experience for all children. With our laser procedures, we are able to provide gentler treatments and faster healing time. Call us now to make an appointment. And the best towel is when we are done, we get a chocolate towel. Call Dr. B's Pediatric Dentistry today. Okay, we're back. And um, we're going to touch on flood one really, uh, really quick moment here. 
Um, I think we have a flood map. We do. That you yeah. that you gave us, and I'm gonna have my mm -hmm. my TD in the back put that up. So, mm -hmm. the reds are. You definitely got to have it? Exactly. That Well, if you have a mortgage. If you have a mortgage. That's going to be our special flood hazard area. That's going to be your uh, VVE zone. Okay. Uh, this is actually the home I'm currently in. And funny thing about it is it's in the low-risk flood zone. It's in the preferred flood zone X. Yeah. And look, it's surrounded by the <laughs> special flood map. It's actually wow. flooded twice since it was built in 93. Uh, that's amazing. And it is... $450 a year for the maximum flood insurance on that home. Wow. So it, so it really, so you could be surrounded by moderate or you could be mm -hmm. in a moderate, but yet the very location where, uh, where the water, I guess so it's, a, it's a water flow thing. It's a water flow thing, it exactly. puts you into the mm -hmm. high risk. Exactly. And it's also a matter of how they draw them a flood map at the end of the day. You know, sometimes, like we can write those LOMA letters, you know, you can change flood zones, and communities can also uh, a basically whole, community. whole communities can write a letter to the government and get best, basically flood base, special flood zoning permits. It's it's more intricate than people would think. Wow! That, uh, that, that, yeah, that does yeah. sound like it's real. You got to drill down. You do. You oh, do. Wow! Yeah. But and, and so the but and the thing is, so you get the flood, but mm -hmm. it's but it's attached to your home. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about home insurance. Uh, so it can be attached to the home insurance, and the home is something that we really focus on at Goosehead Insurance. Right. Um, home is, and the reason why we do that is because we help lenders and real estate professionals close their deals. Um, we can turn around a binder same day, which is huge. You know that with your wife being in the mortgage industry. Um, yeah, I'm sure she's had a few times where she's like, I can't get a hold of that insurance agent. <laughs> you call me now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't hold up the process. We have multiple options. So we can focus, we, and we know the lingo of the mortgage professionals. Right. You know, we can make sure that there's no DTI issues, your debt to income. We can make sure that the company that's representing your client is one of the best in the industry. So they're all A-rated carriers. Because and that 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 rating mm -hmm. is a huge deal in Florida. You in, know, it. yeah. That, because that's your that's your payout rating, right? Yeah. Whether you, A's A's good. Mm -hmm. C, you're probably not getting paid ever. It's probably not yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like school, right? You want to have the A, yeah. the A plus. A's are yeah. Good. A's are good. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And, that, so that's our main focus on home because we do help those mortgage professionals and real estate professionals. But we, we know the coverages. That, that's what it boils down to. You know? And we, I wanted to talk a little bit today about home insurance coverage to help okay. clients and to help anyone listening right. you know, understand it. Um, so one of the first things I figured everyone want to talk about, ooh, ooh, ooh. Deductibles. deductibles. What is a deductible? Yeah, there's, there's different deductibles. There are different deductibles. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you have, and in some cases, most policies have two deductibles in the state of Florida. They have a wind and hail deductible, which is usually a percentage, and they have an all other perils deductible, okay. which is listed as an acronym on their policy as an AOP deductible. In some cases, you can have a third deductible as a named storm deductible. So, Hurricane Irma comes through. That's going to be that separate deductible. It's not going to be a regular wind and hail storm that we might get here in Florida. Right. And for those that don't know, a deductible is what you're going to pay out for the claim. So if you have $90,000 in damage and you have a $1,000 all other perils deductible, you're going to receive $89,000 okay. out of that $90,000. Right. And it's amazing how many people don't want to ask because they think they should know. But so that's why we want to make sure that everyone understands what they're getting. Right. And at claims time, they don't go, "What do you mean I have to pay out this money? You know, what do you mean I'm not getting all the, this money to replace my roof? You know, it's going to cost ten thousand right. dollars to replace my roof and my deductibles, a thousand dollars." And there's a difference between your deductible and your storm deductible. Yes, mm -hmm. because. I, boy, when when Irma came through last year, mm -hmm. oh, my deductible is this. The next thing I know, oh, my God, I didn't know my storm deductible was that mm -hmm. much. And it's funny, a, a lot of people do that because it's a percentage. So they don't think, they don't break it down completely, and they don't go, okay, well, that's how much money I need to have saved up just in case something happens here, just as a reserve. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, wind and hail deductibles, I've heard of. Mm -hmm. And that is because, now is that from, a, can that be like just a typical thunderstorm that we get? Exactly. Because our, our, sometimes our thunder and our thunderstorms mm -hmm. are worse than our hurricane storms. They very much can be. And, you know, it could be raining right over this building and sunny right down the street. Yeah, you know, how many times does that happen around here? Yeah, you know, so right. if you just get one of those really bad little pocket storms, that's going to be your wind and hail deductible. Okay. And if you have the option, I always say have put a lower deductible on that to help at, if, at claims time. You know, so, so in the, in the, and do we know what that is? So, so if I called up my insurance person, mm -hmm. which unfortunately is not you, but I, I almost <laughs> wish it was. One day, yeah. Um, I can say, okay, what are all my deductibles? Yes. And he can mm -hmm. name the deductibles. You can that I name have. them right off with the declaration page that you get that shows all your coverages. Okay. And, and on that same declaration page, you're going to have the different coverages listed out. Your coverage A is going to be your dwelling coverage. Okay. That's going to cover your home. And that can get a little confusing because you go, well, you know, I paid $175,000 for this home. Why do I have to insure it for $230,000? Well, there's a difference between market value and replacement cost value. That's correct. Your market value is going to be what the home is worth, where it's at at the time. The real estate market where it's at and maybe land value comes into play. Your replacement cost value is going to be what it costs to rebuild your home. And we get that through what's called an RCE, a replacement cost evaluator. And we take all the information we can find on your home. We use a property appraiser site, building permits site, we look at Zillow. We talk to you if you have a good agent. You know, right. I'm going to talk to you if you've had a um, kitchen remodeled or bathrooms remodeled. Right. You know, maybe you've done your floors, um, and we put all that information in there to make sure you are insured to the now, full value. And that's the dwelling. That's not your stuff. Correct. Yeah, your stuff is going, and everything else basically after the dwelling is going to be a percentage. So your stuff, your personal property on the policy. Defaults usually at fifty percent, and you want to have that conversation again. Some people, they have a lot of things. I know. got a lot of stuff. Yeah, I know. Just saying, <laughs> cool I got studio. a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and one other thing with that is you really want to make sure that you know what type of personal property coverage you have. There's two different types. There's replacement cost that replaces it at the value it's at today, or there's appreciation cost value. Actually, wow. excuse me, actual cost value. And that is a depreciated value right. of your belongings. So let's say this laptop, I bought it for $1,200. And at the time, three years down the road, it cost $800 for the same laptop. If you have actual cash value for your policy, you're only going to get $800. If you have replacement cost value, you're going to get a higher value. You're going to get basically a up to standard par laptop. So you probably might not get the full $1,200. But you're probably going to get at least a thousand for good. that same, yeah. And, that, and, that, and that's a big deal, right? Big deal, big okay. deal. If you've so, ever seen a claims adjuster sheet, uh, and when it breaks down, you want the replacement cost value. Right. When you start to see percentages on all of your belongings, yeah, no. that's not a good feeling. No. No. I don't want to have an Xbox One and have to go and have to go back <laughs> to an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. No one wants to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally not cool. That's the dark I'm ages, man. Saying, that's the dark yeah. ages. <laughs> yeah, I've got an Apple 10 and I get an Apple 5. No, no, I want the 10. So another one is people fall down and get hurt on your property. Yes, that's going to be your personal liability policy. And this actually is not a percentage as well. This is a flat value. And what I found with my experience in the insurance world is that a lot of people think $100,000 is standard for personal liability, especially in Florida. And this happened when citizens came in and basically all you had was citizens as an option for a right. long time, yep. right? And they their maximum coverage that they would write for personal liability was 100,000. The standard used to be 300,000. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And I have a carrier that'll write over a million dollars, but some carriers will write about 500,000. The, usually the max for most carriers is 300,000. Uh, it just depends on the carriers that you have available and the risk Sorry, that they're willing sir, to take. Sorry, sir, that tow is only worth twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Suck yes. it up, Buttercup. Hopefully, he's not a professional <laughs> soccer player. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> the personal liability isn't a very important coverage to have. It, okay. 
it's going to make sure, like, if you have guests at your home and they get injured and they sue you, that's what's going to protect you. It's okay. going to for your attorney fees, for any litigation, and, you know, whatever it may cost medical payment-wise. Right. And that you also have medical payments coverage on a policy. This is usually paid out to avoid the personal liability claims. The max on most policies is 5000 so it's not going to pay out too much, no. but hopefully avoiding any type of medical bills and extra medical expenses. Right, right. And very important thing to notate on that, medical payments is only for guests. It's not for family members living in the household. It is only for guests that are on the property. Okay. That, well, mm -hmm. that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know there's things called endorsements, and I know we've uh, got yeah. about a minute left, and uh, my, my, my timer decided it wouldn't stop on me, so uh, thank no. God my TV's back there and telling me because I'd be lost. Right? Endorsements. What are endorsements? Well, I could talk about these for a while, but uh, one of the most important ones I would say and is a scheduled personal property. It is so important that if you have jewelry, guns, uh, firearms, excuse me, um, if you have coin collections, stamp collections, that you itemize those on a policy because there's a very limited oh. amount of payout for okay. those. It, jewelry usually pays up to $1,000 on a policy. Oh. You have a $100 necklace, you're probably, you're fine. You know, it's going to pay the 100000 But if I have a tag hour, You're done. I mean, you're not going to get much for that at all. Right, yeah. see? But you, if you list it out, you say what it is, serial number. A lot of companies like an appraisal done as well. Right. Pictures can do and original receipts, and you'll fully insure your items. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there's more. I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to finish right. up on this when we get back. We're going right. to go to a break, come right back. We'll finish up homeowner, and then we're going to come back and talk to you about why Goosehead Insurance. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, I'm Jerry from Hot Locks Hair Salon. We are conveniently located at 13414 U.S. Highway 19 in Hudson. I've been a local hairstylist in our community for the last 34 years, seven of which I was an educator. Our passion is the artistry of hair, and Hollox is here to help you achieve your perfect image. You can call us at Okay, we're back. And we're going to finish up with the endorsement side. Yes, endorsements. And these are very important because you want to make sure you're getting full coverage on your home insurance right. policy. I can't tell you countless times that I've talked to people and, you know, had this comprehensive full conversation with them. They go, well, you know, 
what about this coverage? You know, a lot of times things need to be added on, uh, like dog liability. There's a lot of carriers that will not write certain dog breeds. However, again, one of the reasons I went with Goosehead Insurance was to have more options for people. Okay. And we have options for German Shepherds, for Rottweilers, now it does bulls. pit bulls, um, the whole nines. They're few and far between, but there are options out there to make sure that they have that liability coverage extended to them. And to make sure that at claims time, your claim's not denied because you had a dog that wasn't listed on the policy because it was on the do not, uh, do not have, or do not, uh, do not list breed, um, mm -hmm. you know, that they have there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we won't cover the bites from these dogs. Exactly. But there are carriers that will. I mean, they tier it. So, I mean, you might pay a little bit more for it. But if you've ever been in any type of litigation for a dog bite, no. okay, you don't want to be it's that not person. Fun. It's not. And now, okay, so really quick, yeah. if I have a dog, no matter what the breed, should I have a sign in my yard that says pet on premises? That actually can help, yes, because if they're an uninvited guest, then the liability is not on you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And technically, if they're an uninvited guest anyways, then the liability is not on you. So you don't, technically don't need to have the sign, but it can't but, hurt to have that so extra if you, protection so out if, there. So if you've got a chihuahua, get British. your sign, because <laughs> you know what? Ankles are important. They I'm are. just saying. They're just important. Okay, so... Uh, and so, uh, uh, I said screen enclosures. Screen enclosures. Sometimes this is included in the dwelling coverage, but oftentimes, even if it's included in the dwelling, it's not covered for storm damage unless it's endorsed onto the policy separately. Okay. So if you have that pool screen enclosure, you know, over your pool, then you want to make sure you have this endorsement on there. What about swimming and pools? Swimming pools... Are they Endorsed. covered into the dwelling? Or are they? They are. They are. Yeah, that's okay. usually listed under our replacement cost estimator, and there's nothing that usually needs to be endorsed extra for oh, that. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? I feel better now. <laughs> and uh, another endorsement is a water backup and sump overflow. This is if um, your toilet backs up and creates water damage on the floors. This uh, the washing machine floods washing the house. Machine yeah. floods the house. You, you went away yeah. for the weekend and forgot to turn your water off. Yeah. Hey, you want to make sure this endorsement's on the policy because most carriers again do not cover the full water damage on the dwelling. There are a couple, and I write through a couple of my Olympus yeah. insurance. Okay, but a lot of them separate out the coverage, so you want to make sure you Got have it. the water backup endorsement on there. Okay, sure. so we're going to jump over now to really quickly auto. Auto insurance. Uh, everyone loves the auto insurance. That's, I know. I, I know. I should have PIP, right? <laughs> you have to have PIP. If you're you, personal injury protection, PIP, and property damage are the required okay. coverages in the state of Florida. Technically, the minimum state limits for bodily injury are 1020, as well. And so, what is bodily injury? Yeah, you know, a lot of people go, "Yeah, it's, it's when you're bodily injured. You know, you're you're injured." It's actually not the case. Bodily injury is for when you cause an accident to someone else. So let's say me and you are in an accident. Okay. And you cause the accident to me. Your bodily injury coverage is going to pay my medical expenses, my loss of work wages, and pain and suffering, which is a very broad term in litigation right. purposes. So you, it's very important to carry a good amount of liability coverage. Okay. And as, that's one thing that we struggle with in Florida because... <laughs> <laughs> and, the litigation cost keeps going up in the insurance world, so we're seeing an increase in premiums. But most of the increase in the last couple of years has been in property damage and personal injury protection okay. because everyone's required to carry them. Right, right. And trying to make sure that that pool, everyone's contributing to the pool of insurance to keep costs lower is why they've been trying to increase that. But what happens is you have people who couldn't really afford the insurance in the first place. They got the bare minimum. Right. And then now they're seeing this increase in insurance. And it's tough on them. Right, right. If you have higher bodily injury limits, it helps your insurance in the long run. I've seen people okay. with 20 plus years of top coverage and they pay a lot less than people with the bare minimum coverage. Okay. Because they, they're in that higher tier, they're less risk. And to the point though of bodily injury, you know, where's the coverage the other way around, right? right, right. Where's the coverage for me? Right. That's the uninsured motorist coverage or underinsured. Now, can you stack that? 
you can stack that. Ah, see, yes. I learned a word. Yes. I heard this the yeah. other day going, yeah. you got to stack that. That's you gotta... real good. Yeah, okay. It's better than most right there. I like that. Thank That's... you. I try. <laughs> Uninsured, so let's say we get in that accident again. And you're not insured. I'm not insured. I, I caused the accident to you now. Right. And I have no bodily injury coverage, or I have the bare minimum. I have 1020. Right. I have just, let's just say, I've broken both your legs terribly. Most of the bones in your legs, you can't go back to work for six months. My, you don't have any bodily injury coverage to get from me. Right. So your uninsured motorist coverage will now pay for your medical costs, your loss of work wages, pain and suffering. And by the way, also in both of these coverage, there is attorney fees okay. as well. So you do have the litigation. So that doesn't come out of the money that we receive for to Correct. take care of bills. That That's a separate thing that gets covered. Yep, that's going to be in your... Got it. In the, depending on the accident. Right, right. In this right. case, it would come out of your uninsured motorist coverage. Okay, so mm -hmm. now I hear these. I hear this term thrown around a lot, and, and sometimes I get it, and some, I'm like, it makes sense, but... Umbrella policies. Oh, umbrella. Yeah, right after the liability, it's you have to talk about umbrella insurance. Okay. And to describe umbrella insurance, I, it's best to tell a story. Okay. I, I had a client who, she was a professor at a college, and she was getting ready to retire in a couple years. Right. She's shopping at Publix like we all do. She gets her groceries. She loads up her car. She's backing out. She doesn't see a little girl who's broken away from her mom who was holding her hand and, bat and runs her over. Mm -hmm. Luckily, the little girl's okay. $750,000 in medical expenses later, she leaves the hospital. She's recovering. But that's a lot of large amount of money. And fortunately, she had talked to me and our agency about umbrella insurance the year before. So this umbrella was in place, and umbrellas are usually about a million dollars, and it can go up in increments up to about five million, mm -hmm. and it's that liability coverage, protecting you over and above your current bodily injury limits. If we had not put that umbrella policy on her, a series of events would have occurred. One, she would have paid a large expense out of pocket to make sure that little girl was okay. And second, she would not have been able to plan or retire the way she planned to. Right. That and so umbrella policies are so important. They can go above and beyond liability limits on your auto, your home insurance, rental properties, boats, motorcycles, any asset you put under the umbrella is how we like to look at it. You know, how many friends do you want to get under your umbrella? How big right. is it? You know, I mean, the, obviously the bigger the umbrella, the right. more of the cost. But it's amazing how little these umbrella policies can cost. I mean, I've seen them under three hundred dollars a year. It's usually really? like a couple hundred dollars generally. Mm -hmm. And that's just boy, that's good insurance. It is. It is. Uh, it's just that's just that that mm -hmm. keeps you from having to go. Well, now you own my house. I don't own it anymore. Yeah, that, you don't want that. <laughs> right. No. Wow. That right. is that. So okay, my question to you is: If I ask you one qu simple question, is why Goosehead Insurance? Good, because we tailor insurance needs for all of our clients is we have a unique approach and we keep it simple we have cutting-edge technology that makes sure that you are getting the most and the best experience from the insurance world I, to, to put it very plainly and simply as far as keeping it simple it's amazing how much easier it is for me to write a policy now goosehead insurance than before with the other agencies I was with Wow it, night and day I can turn around Big difference turn around a binder the same day for the home buying process I can send electronic signature documents to anyone needs it if you're traveling or for work or whatever it may be you just have a busy life right you know, maybe we need to do the whole process over the phone right we are well equipped to make sure that you are protected and that you have that still that holistic soup to nuts that's it soup to nuts soup to nuts one yep. stop you can take care of it I hate that mm -hmm. word one stop shop that really kind of bothers me sometimes. But in this situation, if I have one guy that takes care of all my insurance needs, I I'm a happy guy. Yeah, you, you want that at your insurance guy. Right. You don't want 10 different insurance guys, no. you know, who has what. I, I, we laugh, but I've seen it. I see it all the time. So make now, life simpler for yourself. And right. go with Goosehead. Fly above the rest. So Goosehead. where do we find you? I am off of Seven Springs Boulevard in Trinity, Florida. 2150 Seven Springs Boulevard. 
And you can reach me at 727-777-4515. And I believe uh, you have my email address on there as well. We have your website. We have your email. We have you. You got me. I mean, you got me. I, I answer my phone all the time. I call back if you I don't answer. You actually answer your phone. I do. I answer my phone. If, if I'm hey, in a meeting or, you it's know. It's an amazing thing. A, I, I call back. I hit that call back button. You know, yep. I can find it. Yep. <laughs> it, it, it. And it really is. It's, it's really, it's today customer service is everything. Yeah. And if you're not willing to make, just return a quick phone call going, hey, I saw mm -hmm. you called. Let me handle this for you. Mm -hmm. I got you. Don't worry about it. That to me is, um, now, let me question. So, if I'm your client and I've got a birthday, an anniversary, and a renewal, you can call me on all three? If you like me to. If you want to hear from me, I'm calling you. My wife says I am so hard on people because I want my insurance to call me. I want him to call me three times a year. I want him to call me on my birthday, my anniversary for my wedding. Okay. And then, hey, we're getting ready to renew you. Everything okay? Uh, I, okay. Everything's I can, good. Or I've got this question. I can guarantee the birthday and the renewal. The anniversary, you got to share that information with me. It's That's not a part of my one. questions. Yeah, yeah. For a guy like you, happily married, you know, you know that kind of stuff. Well, it's important, but it's a very, yeah, very big deal. I'll probably call you a couple other times just to make sure everything's all right. See, that's, 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 what, that's what I'm talking kind about. Of that's guy, customer yeah. service. <laughs> all right, everybody. This week's a focus on business. It's all about Adrian. I mean, yeah. Oh, and Darian. Darian. Oh, my God. And Goosehead <laughs> Insurance. And I'll tell you what. It's an A rating. It is an A rating. It's, it's A. A through the A rating. A rating, yeah. rating baby. <laughs> and uh, so if you need insurance or if you just want your insurance looked at, just to yeah. make sure you got the right stuff. 100%. Give this young man a call. And uh, we'll see you next week on Focus on a Business. Thank you.